Hi, this is Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Normally I'm talking about tractor stuff, uh, and I talk a lot about safety, but today we're going to talk about safety of livestock. And, and a lot of folks that watch my channel have moved out to the country and, and have no experience growing up on the farm, and, and uh, at some point may get livestock, maybe horses, cattle, alpacas. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking with Tim Schnockenberg, who is an extension agronomy specialist, and we've had a situation in the Ozarks where I live this year with drought. And Tim, uh, certain plants in a drought become a real danger to livestock. Tell us what we have to fear. Well, the ones that we fear the most are the sorgo type plants such as Johnson grass, uh, sorghum sedan grass, and sometimes millet, uh, which is a problem uh, in a drought where you could have actually two toxins. The, the, the one that comes to mind first would be uh, uh, nitrate toxicity, and that's primarily a place where they've put some nitrogen on their pastures uh, preceding the drought. And when that happens, um, get a heavy dose of nitrogen, grass is growing, it starts growing good, and then all of a sudden we just, the rain runs out, and we start drying off, and all that forage is sitting there short, you know, relatively short, but it doesn't have the ability to utilize all the nitrogen. And so it actually turns that nitrogen into a toxic form, uh, nitrate or nitrite, either one, uh, that actually will, uh, be lethal to cattle if they graze it at the wrong time and that's the only thing they're grazing. We're, we're in lush uh, lush field right now of Johnson grass and this this is property I own where I want to build my downsized dream house someday and uh, it, it's a field of almost solid uh, Johnson grass and and we've luckily had rain in the last couple of weeks but if you're still in a dry area and you have something like this uh, when, when do you know you've got danger? Well, uh, you don't always know. I mean, the color of the of the of the leaves can give you an indication. Uh, if it's really good and lush and green, but yet droughty. Um, we've had some situations, particularly here in Missouri uh, in 2012, where cattle did die from nitrate toxicity. And so that's, a, that's an ongoing concern. A lot of people will have their forages tested to confirm it. The best way is to send it to a, a lab, the leaf area and the upper stems where the animal might actually eat and test it and get a quantitative number. We also do a quick test in some of our Missouri Extension offices uh, where we can say yes, no, you've got a, you, you do, you don't have a problem. If you do have a, some indication of nitrates um, in the lower stem, we'll say hey, go ahead and send some to the lab and confirm exactly what the levels are. Just because you get a what we call a drought killing rain doesn't mean you're immediately fine. It, it takes, it actually spikes a little bit. The nitrate level will spike a little bit for a few days after that first rain before it starts to level off. And so what we tell people is give yourself a week or so before you just jump in there and bring cattle back in. Now, a lot of you don't live in Southwest Missouri, have viewers all over the country. If you're in an area with, with Johnson grass, uh, the, the thing I would like people to know is if, if grasses are stressed by drought, there can be a danger depending on what forage is in your pasture. Most states, I think all states, uh, have land grant universities that that have extension services and they have guys like Tim that'll come out and look at them or, or give you good uh, unbiased advice based on research. So utilize your extension service if you think you've got a problem. Um, the, other, the other danger I want to talk about is prussic acid. Tell us about that. Many of the sedan grass varieties and Johnson grass uh, can get a problem called prussic acid which is equivalent to uh, cyanide poisoning. And it can be lethal as well to all classes of animals, uh, primarily cattle is where we have the most problem. And it's generally a problem when the forage is really short and it's droughty. Again, it's got to be in a drought. And there may not be anything else out there to eat, which is, you know, means that they'll camp out on that forage and that's all they eat. Uh, that can be lethal within minutes uh, sometimes if they get enough of it in their belly in a short amount of time. So it's the short stuff, primarily 20 inches or shorter, that we want to stay away from during the drought. 
We're in a field right now that, that a couple of weeks ago was brown and really, really stressed by the drought. If we'd have turned cattle in here, we could have had a problem with that. Now, we, we fortunately got rain this last week. It has shot up tremendously, or, or we passed danger here. Uh, Mike, I think we are at this point. I mean, most of this, most of this is b above 20 inches or so, and I think there is some short uh, material in the in the stand, but I think for the most part, we're past the danger at this point. What about putting up hay on some of these fields that have yeah. um, been stressed by drought? That's a very good question, Mike, because unfortunately, hay can kill cattle in the winter if it had nitrate levels. Not a problem for prussic acid. Prussic acid in the hay drying process kind of dissipates and goes away. So we don't worry about prussic then. But for uh, nitrate levels, the level that it is the day you cut it is going to stay the same in the hay. Now the one exception though is if it's harvested for silage. Let's say somebody put, wraps it and puts it in, a, in a, an inline wrapper and makes silage out of it or haylage, uh, it can dissipate the nitrate levels 25 to 50 percent. So that's really your best situation there for dealing with high nitrate uh, forages in a drought. The bottom line to all this, again, um, folks that are moving out to the country and want a few cattle or horses, and, and some livestock's not as susceptible as others. Horses are finicky eaters, so a lot of times they don't get the poisonous stuff, but cattle will eat this stuff and, and can get in trouble. So guys like Tim exist all around the country in North America and, and probably in other countries as well, if the truth be known, and they've got good information based on research. And uh, if, if a person was in southwest Missouri and wanted, wanted to know if their fields were a danger to livestock, what, what do they do? When it comes to prussic acid, there's really not a good test. Uh, there are some test strips out there that people have used. We don't have enough confidence in those to say that they're just justifiable and, and safe to use. Uh, again, we can do a, a quick test through most extension offices across the state uh, using a sulfuric acid diphenylamine mixture, which unfortunately is not commercially available. You have to get it from a special lab uh, on campus, but um, it's, 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 it is a service that the University of Missouri Extension does provide for a quick yes-no test. Uh, but this, the best way to test is just to take the forage that you think they would eat and uh, ship it to a diagnostic lab of some kind and they can give you a quantitative number. It's a lot, it's a lot cheaper than dead animals. Yeah. And it's starting to rain, so the interview is coming to an end. We're going to test this field of Johnson grass to see if we've got a nitrate problem. Uh, and I'll put a link to that uh, video down below. I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and share this video with other livestock folks. If you have questions or comments, put them down below. We'll try to get back with you. Thanks for watching.